Good evening. I'd like to call the January 25th, 2023 Town Board meeting to order. Ms. Marco, will you call the roll? Mr. Christo? Present. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Present. Mr. Dotson? Present. Mr. Mastriani? Present. And Mrs. Collins? Present. Five present. Thank you, Ms. Marco. A quorum is present. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Ryan, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have a very busy night. We're going to have a uh, presentation from the Syracuse University Project Advanced Policy Studies at Shelmont High School. Um, I encourage anybody who hasn't gotten one of the handouts, which also goes along with their presentation, to grab one. And um, we're going to be holding an executive session, but we're holding that at the end of the meeting so that we can get through all of our business. We'll hold it after the liaison and miscellaneous comments are made. Okay, so uh, as I said, tonight we have a presentation um, from Ms. Ryder's class at the Sy uh, from the Syracuse University Project Advanced Policy Studies at Shelmont High School, and their presentation is on the Town of Rotterdam Water Issues. Uh, yes, just just to, for clarification purposes. First of all, again, thank you, Ms. Ryder and your students. You guys always do a great job. This is a presentation by students at Shaman High School. This in no way is an adaptation by the town board. Clearly, the kids are very direct, which they should be in their presentation and what they felt was necessary in their in their study. But I don't want anybody to misinterpret as that something that the board has adapted uh, because. You know, there are some things that, that are very costly in here, and they're great recommendations, but again, sometimes the public, the public misinterprets things and things that we've adapted this or adopted it. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. You're fine. <laughs> okay, go on, look this way. <laughs> We are the Syracuse University Policy Study students from Shamont High School, and today we'll be presenting on the current water infrastructure issue in the town of Rotterdam. Uh, what is the issue? The outdated water infrastructure within the town of Rotterdam is unable to supply water needed for economic and population growth. The negative impacts on the community start with health and your basic necessities of everyday life. You need your su supply of water to shower and cook. The other thing that comes with that is water main breaks. Water main breaks create a loss of water and affect the people in the area because the pipe is broken and cannot bring water into the homes. <coughs> Businesses, and such as restaurants and even schools, have to close. The other thing is boil water advisories. Boil water advisories are an issue because people do not have access to clean water. Next, you have safety, which comes with fire protection. <coughs> the, water, the water supply in the water towers is not enough to keep the pressure in the fire hydrants at the correct level. The fire hydrants need to be at the correct pressure so firemen are able to get water from them. Lastly is restrictions. The town of Rotterdam has implemented water restrictions in order to conserve water. The town of Rotterdam implemented water restrictions on July 24th, 2020 to help maintain our water systems and maintain water supply and pressure at all times for fire protection and household use. The restrictions are in place from May 1st to September 15th and explain when 
water sprinklers can be active on the day. from the, the blue bar, that's our daily withdrawal, uh, it's on an upward trend and it kind of gets dangerously close in 2020 and 2022. Now if it continues to rise like that, we might be seeing catastrophic uh, events on the, on, due to the, the daily withdrawal um, in July. Now I believe the wells are capable of pumping about 12 million gallons into, uh, into the system. The system can't handle that much because it can't output that much uh, on a given day. Uh, which leads us into our cause of the problem. So in our conversations with Just Justin Peterson, we found that there were two main causes of the problem, the first of which being what Bennett just talked about. The town of Rotterdam uses a large amount of water, which stresses the uh, water systems. The graph to the right shows that annually, between 2019 and our expected value of 2025, um, the town of Rotterdam uses about 1.3 billion to 1.6 billion gallons of water annually each year. And as Bennett mentioned, sometimes it gets to a point where um, we are reaching the maximum that we can produce and uh, send out to people. And also the aged water system, uh, which is, as Peter said, uh, built in the 1950s, is deteriorating with this overconsumption. So the aged water system mixed with this high amount of water being pushed through the system causes massive problems, including water main breaks and system failures. So our class proposes a policy that the Rotterdam Town Board will enact that will direct the Department of Public Works to award contracts to the infrastructure improvements to the water system, referring to the Barton and LaJudice Rotterdam Water System Improvements Project. Barton and LaJudice is an engineering firm that contracted with the town of Rotterdam in order to survey water, in, survey water infrastructure. So Barton and LaJudice um, initially introduced a bunch of key improvements in September of 2022 to the board. Some of these improvements include pipe size and material changes to highly populated roads, including Rice Road, West Campbell Road, Burdeck Street, North Thompson Street, Altamont Ave, Carmen Road, and Helderberg Ave. They also suggested that inoperative mainline valves should be replaced, and also new mainline gate valves and hydrants for new pipelines. When we enact our policy, the infrastructure improvements would increase the amount of available water, and this will strengthen the firefighting efforts. This will also decrease the risks and costs associated with water main breaks, and this will grow the town's economy 
which will um, allow for businesses to flourish. Um, there will be some costs to this project. Um, this will cause traffic delays and business disruptions and e increased taxes due to the cost of this project, which is $33,900,000. However, there are grants that are available, and Supervisor Collins said that the town of Rotterdam uh, will apply for as many grants available. Uh, the effectiveness of water infrastructure improvement policies can be seen from many different sources. The Journal of the Futurist states that one of the best ways to increase available water for towns is to uh, uh, invest in water infrastructure improvements. Additionally, the uh, the current U.S. administration recently passed <coughs> the American Jobs Plan under the belief that by increasing and improving on our infrastructure, we will be able to stimulate economic growth and create more jobs throughout the nation. Um, these improvements would increase the amount of water that residents and businesses could use with less risk of water main breaks. And this graph shows Rotterdam's water usage history and then that continued here, and with our policy implemented, this shows an increase in water usage, which would also increase uh, of the amount of residents and businesses. In order for our policy to be effective, it must also be feasible. Um, town board's support is essential for our policy to be passed. Supervisor Molly Collins and town board member Joe Masciani have expressed the desire for water infrastructure improvements throughout the town. We see this when Molly Collins came to our class and proposed us to make a policy to help the infrastructure. Um, town officials have also shown support, such as senior water plant operator Justin Peterson and storm water manager Mary Berry. Um, taxpayers may not support the dramatic changes to infrastructure because this will come in their water bills. The second policy our class recommends is focus more on water conservation to preserve the current infrastructure. <laughs> Rotterdam Town Board will require all homeowners <coughs> utilizing public water in the town of Rotterdam to install water meters by December 2024. And so up here, um, this is a screenshot of a statement issued in 2013 by the DEC that Rotterdam hasn't complied with yet. It states that any PWS water withdrawal permit issues after April 2013 contains a standard condition requiring the installation of meters on all water supply sources and for all customers. So um, a few years ago when Rotterdam um, made a deal with Gildalyn to um, uh, deal water with them and sell with water, um, they, fit the, they fit under this constraint, but um, they have yet to comply to this, and I know there have been several DEC meetings with an official, but nothing has come out of it. Okay, so in our research, we found a 2004 study sponsored by the U.S. EPA, along other uh, like associations and areas in the country, that found that when you put in water meters, then you can expect a water to decrease by about 21.8 gallons a day per unit, and then we also found a more recent study from 2021 um, by Nature Center Journals, and this, this study took place in Colorado, where they found that there was an 8% reduction of water consumption in, af in the first year after installing water meters, and that decrease is, does continue at about 1-2% to in the following years. So we have a graph here that shows the percent increase from 2019. So in 2020, there was a big increase because of COVID, and so there was a decrease in 2021. However, there is an upward trend in our water consumption. So we have a break here for uh, when our policy would be implemented, and so you can see that without the policy, there is an up and down trend that does continue with upward. However, with the policy, there would be uh, an percent decrease in our water consumption overall, and then you would see that it starts to uh, like continue decrease, but not only would our water consumption overall decrease, but it would also be more consistent. As the benefits and costs of our policy, um, we expect that the wasteful water usage would decrease as people would be more aware of how much water they're actually using while they're metered compared to when they're not metered. And with the reduction in water usage, we hope that the pressure in the pipes would increase, which would allow um, fire hydrants to be more effective and firefighters would be able to be more efficient with their work. Um, and with the implementation of water meters, you'd be able to um, 
reduce the amount of cluttering when construction projects are happening if you were to replace the pipes, which is inevitable and happens all the time, uh, you will be able to extend that over a long period of time, which will make the town more uh, fluid when it functions. And uh, the re reduction for the need of water restrictions will be um, due to the less uh, water usage, which will put less strain on the system, therefore it can handle a bit more. And um, with the people using less water, uh, houses will be built more accordingly, as houses that um, do not have a pool or use very little water won't have to pay a flat rate, they'll pay according to how much water they use, and in turn, the cost of that is households that do have a lot of water, say a pool, and uh, have a garden and a bunch of stuff, will have higher bills. And we expect that the cost of meters uh, is around $600 for a more digital meter, and for a um, analog meter is going to be a little lower, probably around $500, $400. And the installation of water meters, someone will have to install the meter on your property, and then eventually, in later times, someone will have to monitor it. In order for any policy to be implemented, it not only needs to be feasible, but also needs to be supported. Having support from the town board is important. There is currently pressure from the DEC to implement water meters. Although some town board members have expressed their disinterest in implementing water meters, town supervisor Molly Collins and senior water plant operator Justin Peterson have expressed that a change in our water system is needed. Uh, we would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight, especially due to the weather. But we do have a special thank you for Supervisor Collins and the town board for considering the policy proposals given today, as well as Supervisor Collins again for providing us with the project and the opportunity to involve local government, as well as a very special thank you to Justin Peterson, who's a senior water plant operator, who uh, gifted us the experience at going to the Rodan water plant and showing us the wells there. And Mary Berry, who is the town, excuse me, uh, the stormwater manager for the town of Rotterdam, for sharing the knowledge and expertise. And lastly, Rotterdam Town Departments for information and data. Installing it for each resident? Probably closer to around $2,000. Oh, plus, plus, um, I, I, I love um, the presentation, but what, 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 and our town board members need to understand. Where are the residents of Rotterdam going to get this money to pay for something like this? Don't want to work I mean, I'm, I'm asking you kids, you kids are young, but you don't understand the financial end of this. This is just a school I, I really love this presentation, but I know we need improvements, but how much more, and I'll ask our town councilmen, and they can answer later on at night, which I'm sure they will, um, how much more can the, the residents of the town of Rotterdam pay? I mean, there are you can apply, there are grants and stuff that you can get, and the town can get them and to reduce the cost as much as they can. Okay. And how many grants are there? Available? I do not know. Would know you find that out for us and come back and report? I could. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> did, did you guys kind of work in separate groups? Like, yes. okay, um, in, in formulating, you know, the, the two proposals that you propose, you know, uh, reinvesting in our in our delivery infrastructure and then metering uh, the water delivered, uh, were were there counter ideas amongst any of you? Like, were there some of you that think, or 
gravitated towards the opposite of what you're proposing? And did your research bring you along to concluding, uh, you know, the, the, the two proposals that you propose? So I think it makes um, more sense for, it, I guess it depends on how you want to look at it from a, time, a timeline standpoint. Uh, it makes more sense in the short term to, to meter the DEC as the, the requirement for most towns uh, that they have to meter. But if you want to think long term, then it would be, you would you'd kind of work towards uh, improving the infrastructure. Uh, I think that uh, in, in our research, there's not an easy way to uh, improve the infrastructure. You have, it's, it costs time, it costs money. Um, so sometimes gravitating towards towards the the, the more short term is, is a <coughs> standpoint, uh, and that's that's where we kind of kind of differ. Yeah. So in your pursuit of this, have you done a study on um, the amount of time? Let's say a scale study of the amount of time that this type of project would take to complete. Or is your is your intent to take a, a a a section of Rotterdam and then do that infrastructure first to get an understanding of the dynamics of what it would take to do this type of project? Somebody I'm sorry. Want can, to you, that? can you repeat the question? Did you assess any? Have you done a study as to how much time this would take to do? Are you asking different sections of the town, Roger? So, um, if we had a check for thirty-three million dollars, <laughs> how 30, long do you think this would take to do? Um, uh, several years, at least. Our, our, I guess our intent wasn't to to create a study. It was more towards. Um, uh, so do you think it would be wise, maybe, perhaps, to do a study first of what it would be involved? I think this is a school project yeah. that the teacher put this right. and this on. And these exactly. kids had to just talk about that. Okay. I don't think there was it's, any yeah, it's a, it's coordination a, oh, exactly. of what construction would come to. You know what I'm saying? So you're asking these kids questions. They can't even answer. Right, exactly. They don't know what the cost of a meter is going into a house. They don't okay, well, know that. According to this document, though, it says that these that are Rotterdam kids. Missouri these are doing a staff. class in school, man. And you're, these are when this. If the board were to go on okay. this, okay, this okay you made your point. You, you made your point. Here you made your asking point. Them. She, you made your point. Thank you. You guys did a terrific job. Fantastic. Nice job. You guys had the, the, the totality and the complexity of everything Thank you. into proper consideration. Yeah. You did a very nice job. Thank you. Congratulations. Hi. Um, this is excellent, this presentation. But I want to, you talked about infrastructure. So, my concern is uh, emerging contaminants in our water. Um, you can transport the water in real good infrastructure, but when it gets there, it's contaminated at the faucet. Like Rotterdam's water quality report is showing levels of PFAS and lead service lines. And in your study, did you ever consider this? Because I would think it falls under the umbrella of infrastructure. So the new pipelines that Barton and Majidis suggested are pipes, I think if I'm reading your, listening to your question correctly, are pipes that would not allow for a grand amount of contaminants to be in the water supply. And I, the water supply, the water infrastructure was made in the 1950s, so they did not have or have a knowledge of the concern of contaminants <coughs> as much as we do now. So with the new innovations and improvements, and the type of materials that we can use to create this water infrastructure, I think that the chance of contaminants being in the water will be lessened. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> excellent, thank you. Um, also, what about the lead service lines going into some of these older houses? Did you consider that? Uh, that seems to be another issue uh, we're facing all over the state uh, with old lead service lines that go into houses. Was, did you consider that for this report? I'm not trying to put pressure on you. I'm just saying it wasn't in your thought process. If it was, it you can see. 
Very simply say, you know, it wasn't part of the consideration. Yeah, so you your project had a scope that was your public policy class, not an engineering course. So it's okay to say that. That's right. Well, no, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Um, I just want to just kind of like make you think about it maybe next time that that should be an issue that, in my opinion, should be looked at. So I'm not trying to insult you guys. This is a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't need these people talking for me. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Bill Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes to close the public hearing. Yes, uh, motion passed. We'll now move to privilege of the floor. Um, I just want to remind everybody that you have four minutes. I'll kind of raise my hand when you get close to four minutes. Good evening, my name is Frank Natale, 2041 Caldecott Road. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, Supervisor. I want to reference um, a January 8th article published in the Gazette by Charles Arnold, and it had to do with Water District uh, Five's water infrastructure improvement project and the, and the grant and the water rates. The article's tar, uh, titled Rotterdam Still Hoping to Secure Water Infrastructure, uh, inf infrastructure Funding. Uh, it said the town will apply again for a $5 million grant through New York State Environmental Facilities Corps to help offset the $34 million borrowing or the bond for Water District 5's water infrastructure improvements that the board approved in September. The article also talks about the possibility that the water rates could increase from the current $134.84 to $295 with the grant that I just mentioned, and $316 without the grant. So I'm, I'm just asking for some clarity here. So the town established that, if I understood it right, that the operation and maintenance, or like Samantha said, uh, we should consider that like a utility, is billed separately mid-year. And the debt service, which is part of the property tax, is billed the first of the year. So the, art of, the article suggests that the water bill could increase, like I said, 295 to 316 for operation and maintenance, but relevant to the $34 million borrowing. So can you clarify, would that be applied to, would that be an increase in the 
operation and maintenance, or would that go to debt service? That increase from the 134 that you just approved uh, this year for this budget, I'm confused about that in all the conversations that we had. Um, so that would be helpful, thank That's, you. So, it's debt service. That would be in January's property tax. So that, oh, so the difference between Financing the 295 and the 134, that difference would go to debt service? Or, I, yeah, yeah. Well, what's the calculus there? Tell me the calculus. We haven't <laughs> spent any of that money yet, and, and we don't have any grants in for those projects at the very early stages, but it would be it would be under the debt, the debt service portion. Right, so because the article refer, I think, suggest that that would go, raise the 134, which is the operation and maintenance bill, right? You understand what I'm saying? Or no? I'll have to get back to you. I'll okay. take a look at how the article presents it. I appreciate that. So number two is the article quoted the supervisor relevant to the application for the New York State grant saying, the application was deemed acceptable, but they ran out of funding. So I checked the New York State Environmental Facilities Corps database that lists the status of all the applications from the applicants for 2022 for these grants. That database indicates that Rotterdam's application was incomplete, not that that money ran out. So if you can help me understand that too, I'd appreciate it. And if I have one more minute, you haven't signaled me yet. Um, I, see, I see the town has posted the 2020 financial statements, uh, or the 2020, yeah, financial statement. That's the title of the, the document. It's the independent auditor's report on the town's website. I read through it. I thought it was, there was really good information in there. And I was wondering if... The 2019 was there also, but it looks like it was taken down. But I was wondering if the public will have access through the town's website for the 2021, that report. And when, I think I seen on the budget, there was money to do the 2022 report. And I was wondering if that will be posted for the public, just so we don't have to FOIA it. Because I really think it's got good information and I would recommend any citizen of Rotterdam to read it. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Brenda Tarosian. Did you guys miss me two weeks ago? I'm sure you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brenda Tarosian, 1033 6th Street, Schenectady, New York. Uh, a couple of things. I got me down for three of them. Four minutes. Um, Zoom. Two weeks ago, I went on. Two weeks ago, I went on Zoom because unfortunately I could not make the meeting because I had a procedure done. It was the worst experience of my life. January first, at a meeting, I asked Megan, "How many people go on Zoom?" And she said she had to check the history. January eleventh, when I went on Zoom. Right over here, it tells you how many people are on Zoom. And I was on, another resident was on, Megan, and a phone number. Take two residents out, nobody's on Zoom. Then one part, one part of the um, meeting of the Zoom, you ask Megan, is there anybody on Zoom who wants to speak? I wanted to speak. And she said no. This is what I had to do for Zoom. I had to do this. I had to do this. I had to do this at home on my tablet to try to get Zoom information. Couldn't hear, couldn't hear the residents, couldn't hear you guys, yet we are giving Megan, and it, it could be anybody else, we're giving, giving a $2,000 a year stipend for a system that doesn't work. This is why people do not go to Zoom. I'll never be on Zoom again. I'd get a sled dog if I had to to get here. This is how bad the Zoom is. If you guys can fix it, fine. If you can't fix it, get rid of it. I, I, I had to watch it on YouTube. 
And what did I see on YouTube? Diane, go and look at the laptop over there. If I was another township watching this, yes. If I yes, if I was if I was in another township watching this, Robin Dam would be a laughing stock. I think that's that's one. I know you're not going to do anything about Zoom. Viaport, I know it's over and done with, but it's not. I fought it today for the written agreement of Rotterdam and Viaport regarding the quarter of a million dollars to include the, our counter offer and who was involved in the negotiations with Viaport. And I got this. No counter offer. In this, in this, this is what Diane gave me to. No counter offer. And nobody's name was on it as far as who was involved in the negotiations with Viaport. I know you're going to say, we did this because we didn't want to, they could sue us, they could do this. If, um, my problem is if you're doing it with this, what else is the town doing with the residents' money? And as far as the water, Mr. Mastriani, you said, I know this is just a presentation, but it's a, it's, it's a workup. You said, Rotterdam is not looking to meet any residents in, in Rotterdam. You said that over the summer because of Mr. Santa Barbara's letter to the residents saying, yeah, you're going to do it. And something tells me they're going to do it. So how much more can you milk us? And with the water bill that you guys are getting through. When I was, when I was in high school and... I got accepted to college, and I had to figure out how to pay for it because we didn't have any money. I applied for every single scholarship, every single grant on the face of the earth to help. What drug damn doing? The way I'm reading it, you guys only applied for one grant. You, you, you owe the residents some answers, and I don't know your name because they really didn't formally introduce you to the new lawyer. We don't know what's up with that, but thank you for being our attorney here. Appreciate it. You guys need to do something about Zoom. Especially, especially if you want more people involved in the town of Rotterdam. I had a very bad experience. I mean, really bad. This shouldn't happen. I got more out of um, YouTube. And he did a question, 4,000. Uh, you guys got to do something better for the residents of Rodney, especially if you want them to be involved, to come to these meetings. And it, why should they? Why should they watch Zoom and why should they come to the meetings? I, I, I see it. Thank you. That's it. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak that didn't sign up? Megan, is there anyone on Zoom? There's people on Zoom, but nobody's said they wanted to speak. Right. If there's no one else, then I'm closing privilege of the floor. And we'll go to resolutions. Our first resolution is Resolution 61 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To appoint Jamie Green to the position of Deputy Court Clerk. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passed. Resolution number 62 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To recognize the introduction of introductory local law number one of 2023 and authorize the commencement of the review and adoption process. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Dodson? Second. Second by Mr. Christou on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 63 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. To establish the position of senior heavy equipment mechanic. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. Any question? 
Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 64 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. Authorizing the town supervisor to execute the memorandum of agreement between the town of Rotterdam and the Civil Service Employees Association, recognizing the new job title of the senior heavy equipment mechanic. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll move. Um, motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. So we'll call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 65 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To establish the position of accounts payable receivable clerk. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second by Mr. Christou. On the question, to authorize the town supervisor to execute the memorandum of agreement between the town of Rotterdam and the Civil Service Employees Association, recognizing the new job title of the accounts payable receivable clerk. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 67 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. Call to bid for one new pack MOR R100C smooth side 20 yard body. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Christou. On the, quest on the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 68 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Green Bar Construction, Green Bear Construction Services and Spectrum Environmental Associates Incorporated for the monitoring and removal of asbestos to the Babe Ruth Clubhouse. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Christou. On the, uh, on the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 69 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with the Tote Construction Services for temporary shoring of the Babe Ruth Clubhouse. Okay. Any Madam, discussion? Madam Supervisor, I have to uh, recuse myself from this vote as I worked for this contractor in the past, and I have a written statement I'd like to submit for the record. Is there any further discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Christou. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Recused? Mrs. Collins? Yes. So there's five yes, or four yes, and one recused. Resolution passes. Next resolution is resolution number 70 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Barton LaJudas for professional engineering services for a pump st station study. Okay. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll move. Motion by Mr. Christou. Oh, okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. And the question? <coughs> Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 71 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Barton LaJudas for professional engineering services for consolidation of sewer district number two and its associated extensions out of district users. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Christou. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? 
Uh, in explaining my vote, I believe we had already voted on this as a resolution in 2021 or 2020. Um, it's my understanding, based on the assertions of the deputy supervisor, that the company that was uh, given the consolidation work back then is no longer looking to do that. Uh, so I just want to make sure um, that that's all in line. But uh, based on those assertions, I'm going to vote yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. A five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 72 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To approve budget transfers to the 2023 budget. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Commons? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 73 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To amend resolution number 16.23 of the year 2023, appoint Allison Cartner to the position of Information Processing Specialist 1 part-time. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 74 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Steve Rosen as the Tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention teacher at the Rotterdam Senior Center. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Dodson. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 75 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Osfield and Waldorf Land Surveyors LLP. Um, is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 76 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. Call for bids for chlorine gas. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. <laughs> resolution is resolution 77 the year 2023. The clerk will read. To authorize change order one with Lane Christensen Company for the cleaning and rehabilitation services of well number two. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 78 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Barton and LaJudas for wastewater treatment plant improvements supplement number two. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 79 of the year 2023. The clerk will read. Accepting town board meeting minutes of January 1st, 2023. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? I'll second. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? To explain my vote, I did have an opportunity since our last meeting to confer with counsel, and she advised me she believes that this is um, laid out um, properly and she's comfortable with it the way it is. Uh, therefore, I will vote yes. Mr. Dodson? I'll uh, explain my vote as well. Uh, the last meeting we did table this, and uh, for that very reason, I believe now uh, we have an understanding that um, it's correct in form, so I'll vote yes. Uh, Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. 
Resolution number 80 of the year 2023, the clerk will read. Accepting town board meeting minutes of the January 11th, 2023. Okay, is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll move. Motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Dobson. On the question? Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Um, that concludes our resolution for this afternoon or for this evening. Uh, we'll now move on to the liaison report. Are uh, there any board members who wish to on their liaison? And do any board members have anything they wish to say under miscellaneous? Actually, I'd like to address a few uh, items and miscellaneous. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the presentation that we received uh, earlier. Uh, again, uh, very nice job. Very difficult in a, our community to bring up uh, what I consider is very hot topics. And uh, you hit a home run on this one, uh, as you guys may know. Uh, but it's very important for the younger generation, again, to to have a say, I think, in policy in the town of Rotterdam. Uh, it's been an issue that's been uh, lingering uh, for decades here, and, and uh, we are dealing with it uh, from the town board standpoint. The community's gonna have to deal with it. Um, the regulatory agencies want it taken care of, and, and to bring it to the forefront, again, um, you know, through your project, I think uh, is great, and, and it's nice to hear uh, you guys explain the issue uh, from your standpoint. So again, a job well done. Thanks for taking on a, you know, a very difficult um, issue that the town has to deal with. I uh, just want to respond again to the uh, questions that we received from the privilege of the floor. Um, and not getting into the detail uh, relative to the $34 million water project, um, Yes, indeed, when we do a project, there, there are costs that have to be considered. You know, we already do have a budget for operation and maintenance, and I just want to be clear, this is for Water District number 5. You know, um, obviously you do a $34 million capital improvement project, uh, there's going to be an increase in cost, and as, um, as uh, Councilman um, Mastriani stated, uh, there's a debt service component to that. Uh, the goal of the town board is indeed to um, secure grants and to go after grants. Uh, and actually, we have uh, done more than one grant. There's three or four grants that we've looked at, and we'll share those with you. And, and my uh, practice, uh, seldom do communities get a grant in the first round of grant administration. Um, there's a lot of competition out there for grants. You know, we have to do our best to continue to stay with it. Um, I, you know, I've worked on projects where it takes me 45 years to get a grant. But in the end, that's what you need to do because the bottom line is, is we, you'd want to bring a project in at the lowest cost that you can for your taxpayers. Um, so keep that in mind and we'll continue to do our due diligence to do just that. Uh, again, the Zoom came up uh, when I... Uh, when I did hear the Zoom conversation that, that uh, Brenda is referencing, you know, I, I look at it again initially and say that, um, you know, Zoom again is an important uh, communication. Uh, even if one customer or one of our uh, town residents comes on and has the ability to interact with the board, I think that's extremely important. Um, but yes, indeed, we can do a far better job with all our communications here, uh, Zoom and, and how we use Zoom how we have audio, video in here, uh, we could do, like I said, a much better, much better job and we need to invest money into doing it correctly. Um, again, you know, we had a presentation, there's a lot of work tonight put in by the Shelmont students and I'm not so certain again from an audio standpoint that we couldn't do a better job so that their voices could be heard better. So, so we do hear you and uh, again, I agree with you, we could do a far better job with that. Thank you. That's all I'm asking. Is there any other board member who wishes to speak under miscellaneous? Yeah, if I could piggyback on those comments to it, I'd like to, you know, thank the uh, Shama uh, government class again. Um, you know, you, it's important to be involved in, in government at the local level and at, at every level, and, and breaking down the issues like you guys did is extremely valuable, and you could see, you know, the feedback you got from people by presenting the information. Um, it allowed people to ask, you know, specific questions that are hard to answer, but that it's important that that thought process exists in, in the public. So you, kudos to you guys for presenting the information that engaged people on that level. 
and we'll have your report on our website uh, for people to look at in the months and years to come to you know continue to evaluate these issues as we move forward um, with you know with with our water issues um, in in regards to zoom you know I don't want like repeating myself but zoom does not cost two thousand uh, dollars the two thousand dollars is a stipend for the, the confidential secretary That's for work that she does beyond description um, so we will to, you know councilman Dodson's uh, comments I just wanted to echo that you know it, it is uh, an important feature and we will work on making it more user-friendly you do have the ability I know on a tablet it's a little bit difficult but you can type feedback and even if it's not read during you know privilege of the floor it'll be you know delivered to the to the board as well as any emails or phone calls or texts or anything we will get the, that information um, and to, to Ms. Trojan's comments about the negotiations with Viaport, um, you know, it was, it was a very lengthy process. And, uh, you know, I, again, I don't want to keep repeating the same thing over and over again, but we thought we took a deal that was in the community's best interest and the town's best interest in moving forward and, and not having any kind of lingering contract that could, you know, persist in court for years and months, there would be no guarantee we would have gotten a single dollar. So to be able to get $750,000 plus within eight months uh, of our administration, we, we, we decided that that was a, a, a fair way to move forward. And I know there's differing opinions, and believe me, $243,000 is a lot of money, and you guys speaking up is, is, is critical, it's important, and, and we hear you, and we had to wrestle with that. Um, but we, again, that's, that's what we did, um, and uh, the the report on 2020 was just published on the website. We soon will have a uh, auditor's report on, on 2021. Uh, you know, we, we 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 came in a year ago without a comptroller, and, and now we're at the point of uh, getting our, our uh, getting up to speed, and, and we'll work on closing out. Um, you know, 2021 shortly. This is really a sore spot for me with Viaport. All I'm asking, because you guys, the three of you, came on board saying you're going to be transparent. I forwarded today, I'm asking what was our counter offer to Viaport. I've been saying this since the day I heard about the quarter of a million dollars. What was our counter offer to Viaport? And who negotiated the deal with Viaport? That's all I'm asking, because I can't do anything else. But the residents of Rotterdam deserve to know what what did Rotterdam do? What did whoever negotiated? What did they negotiate with Viaport? What was our counter offer? I'm sorry, quarter of a million dollars is a lot of money. Our council uh, handled those negotiations. Mr. Tinley? We've already dealt with this issue. Why do we keep dealing with this issue over and over again? It's called transparency, sir. Okay. Uh, you, you don't have the, the uh, privilege of the floor. Yes. Madam Supervisor, I make a motion we enter an executive session regarding a personnel matter re relating to employee number. 01252023 with invited guest labor attorney Nathaniel J. Nichols. I'll second that. The motion by Mr. Christo, second by um, Mr. Dodson. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo to go in executive session. Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera. Yes. Mr. Dodson. Yes. Mr. Mastriani. Yes. And Mrs. Collins. Yes. Five yes to go in executive session. Motion passed, passes and we'll enter into executive session at 759. Yes.